President Buhari's refusal to sign the amended uh, Electoral Act is an ambush ahead of presidential primaries, says the House of Representatives. And uh, uh, 10,000 electoral officers to handle Ekiti governorship elections in Ekiti State, says the REC. Well, this is Plus Politics. I'm Mary Anacom. The leadership of the House of Representatives has called on political parties to ignore the delay by President Muhammad Buhari in assenting to the amended amendment made by the National Assembly on the Electoral Act of 2022, which gives recognition to statutory uh, delegates. Now, lawmakers who described the possible withdrawal of the assent to the amend amended bill by President Buhari as an ambush ahead of the presidential primaries have asked parties to go ahead and approve statutory delegates based on their respective constitutions. Now, on May 13, the Senate and the House of Representatives had passed an amendment to the Act that recognizes the statutory delegates at primaries, congresses and conventions of political parties. The majority leader of the House, Al-Hassan Addo Dogwa, alleged that some persons within the ruling All Progressive Congress and the government were misleading President Buhari on the amendment. Well, joining us to discuss this is Rima Shawulu. He is a member of the House of Representatives for Tunkum Donga Usha Federal Constituency in Plateau State. Thank you so much for joining us, Honorable. Thank you very much. Just a small correction is Takum Donga Osa and Yantu Federal Constituency of Taraba State. Of Taraba State, apologies. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, let's start with the urgency that seems to come with the president um, assenting uh, to this particular amendment. Um, why is there a sense of urgency? Is it really needed? Even though the House of Representatives has given an order saying parties should go ahead and um, approve statutory delegates uh, according to their party constitution. <laughs> I'm surprised uh, the House leader will make such a pronouncement. The canon of our existence, democratic existence, is that there is separation of power between the executive legislature and uh, the judiciary. A law is only a law if it is assented to by the president. The National Assembly cannot order the parties to uh, follow an act that has not, a law, a bill that has not been assented to by the president. It is only when the president has, accent, has assented to a bill that it becomes an act and it becomes a law binding. The political parties and INEC are not bound by any bill that has not been assented to by the president. In the event that the president does not give his assent, the National Assembly has a duty and a responsibility to either accept the veto by the president and that veto can only come can only be attempted to overriding the veto can only be attempted after 30 days uh, i don't think that the president has reached the threshold of 30 days number one and the national assembly even a joint resolution of the national assembly a resolution of both the senate and the house cannot replace a validly, uh, I, I, I cannot replace an act. The, an act, for anything to become an act, it must be assented to by the president. Hmm. Now, I think the, pro the problem that we have is simply that uh, a, a, the National Assembly, in my opinion, did some kind of legislative overreach. In the first place, the National Assembly, it has been my considered opinion that the National Assembly should not be legislating for the political parties. The parties were meant to be or are meant to be self-governing entities. I have made my point very clear before that the parties should be allowed to do whatever they want to do. Anyone that is not happy with the parties 
or any decision of the party should be allowed free to go and take another party or if we in the National Assembly had done our work properly, go to contest as an independent candidate. Now, the issues are very clear. There are some democratic gains that the late Ghani Fahemi went to court, up to Supreme Court, and we, that, that we achieved. Honorable, you were trying to explain to us um, what political parties, the powers that political parties have in terms of picking these delegates. And um, you also said that, if, that the National Assembly should not have a right to interfere in party politics, that this should solely be the job of political parties. Now, I remember that we had a conversation some earlier in the year when we were also talking about the issue of indirect or direct primaries. And this is also a position that was taken by the National Assembly, something that you opposed. Um, but then you also made a mention of the fact that political parties can do whatever they want. And I wanted to ask, whatever they want, or should it be done within the confines of the Electoral Act? No, now we are bound by the Electoral Act. We cannot do anything on our own. We cannot go ahead. And which is why it is not possible for National Assembly to order parties to work uh, contrary to the Electoral Act. Until the President signs the amendment, uh, we cannot, the parties, any, any party that adopts the uh, amendment that has not been assented to by the President is going outside the confines of the law, the confines of the Constitution. And the point I was making really is that when you say political parties should do whatever they should do, I'm simply saying the political parties should be bound by their rules. Political parties are supposed to have clearly spelled out rules, and these rules are supposed to be obeyed. National Assembly now goes to write rules to, for parties on how parties should conduct their affairs. That is what has brought about the confusion that we have in the country today. Yeah. And I think I have made the point very clear in the past that in some parts of the world, uh, in a place like the UK, for instance, uh, parties do this. Parties go to source for candidates that will contest election, and the parties uh, that source for those people that will contest elections, I mean, should be allowed to source for those people. And the parties, anyone that is nominated by any political party, is not automatically a representative of the people until that person has contested the general election that is conducted by ANEC, and that person stands in competition with other candidates. The point is that today you are writing, we are writing laws, and in the bid to micromanage the political parties, we have now excluded us, members of the National Assembly, elected party officials, governors, president, and, uh, uh, and so... We now want to uh, change it quickly. What if the change that we are making brings out other problems? Yeah. I think that the process of lawmaking, a law, a, a, a law, a legislation by our constitution goes through several processes. And the reason why it goes through several processes, processes of first reading, uh, second reading, where the general principles of the bills are debated, committee, uh, public hearings, and all is to avoid the situation that we've had now. Hmm. Some of these se se sections that we have now were sections that they are legal, they are correct, they are constitutional. They, they, they followed our procedures, but they were, they were made in a hurry. And uh, there we are, wanting to amend, wanting to force the president to amend. And the legislation is supposed to be brought in perspective. It's supposed hmm. to be such that it covers problems that will be seen in the future. But if legislation is targeted at, targeted at trying to improve certain sections of the population or give disadvantage to add some sections of the constitution, the army of the population, you arrive at the crisis that we have now. And I think the solution to this is for us to appeal to the president. Now, uh, the People's Democratic Party has conducted primary today is concluding the primaries for uh, uh, senatorial candidates. So it's gone more than 50%. So even if 
the president now comes and assents to this this bill and turns it into an act, an act today. Uh, before he comes back to the national, the clerk of the National Assembly for gazetting and so forth, uh, the time would have lapsed for uh, and, uh, it's a lesson for the future that laws need to be made carefully. Uh, uh, talking about the carefulness of making these laws, and I know that you are obviously a member of the House of uh, Representatives, uh, although the PDP is the minority here, but I mean, I know that the uh, certain people have said that the president is being misled by the ruling party, which is obviously the majority. What do you think it could be the reason why this law? Because you've said we have to do, we have to make these laws carefully. There had to have been some back and forth between my, members, but of my, course, it's a case sister, of numbers. My sister, it's a very straightforward issue. The constitution gives the president thirty days to consider this. Uh, whatever we said to him, you have to give the president those 30 days before you complain that he's not in a, he, he's, he, 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 you have to give him the 30 days. We are bound by our constitution. We cannot go outside our constitution. But, but I'm asking, because there are people who are saying that the president, um, that this amendment was unnecessary and that this is misleading the president and that this misleading um, idea is from the ruling party. And I'm saying, if you and other members of the PDP, I'm saying, because I wasn't there, if you kicked against this and it's still scaled through, what do you think the agenda yeah. would be? The, there were several protests by the public, by political parties, by members of the National Assembly, uh, even some in the APC, against certain provisions in the Constitution. Now, for instance, the provision in the Constitution, Section 84, the famous Section 84, mm -hmm. which makes rules for how parties should conduct their primaries. Now, in that section, also makes provision that for people, for a consensus candidates to be accepted by the political party, by the INEC. Polit uh, candidates who have to sign an undertaking that they have withdrawn and that they are supporting some, somebody. The ruling party simply circumvented it and made people who were buying forms to sign an undertaking that, and the undertaking that they were, uh, had, they had withdrawn from the rest, even before the contest, the, the election. As a matter of fact, if the APC leadership wants today, uh, even though that section may still be contested in the courts of law, it can simply decide on who is going to contest the election without going for primaries. Because uh, section 84 that speaks about if, it's for, is, is, uh, if you are going to do consensus, uh, all the candidates who have to sign letters of withdrawal, blah, blah, blah. The parties, all, all, every person that wants, that seeks to contest election under the platform of the APC has already signed, hmm. a, a, signed a letter a, a, that it, they, they have withdrawn. And that letter was freely signed because each person had to take the letter to the Commissioner of Oaths to endorse. It's like an oath. You are swearing on oath that you have voluntarily resigned hmm. uh, before you, are, you contest the election. So uh, the point I'm making is that this is a political process. Many people who are, are going to be victims of the high-handedness of political parties. But I think the solution is to expand the political space so that if you are not comfortable in one, you can go and seek and test your popularity in another place. But we there do have several political people. parties in the country already. It, we it, have... it's, it's what has brought us to where we are now. And oh. what I'm saying, what I started saying is that we gain a lot of, uh, a, a lot of, uh, uh, we, we made a lot of gains when this democracy came. First, INEC was charging fees. Ghanifayeme and others went to court and the court have lowered charging of fees. And it no longer charges fees for people to contest election. Uh, we have room for political parties uh, that can be formed. All we need to do is to further expand the space as it happens in other climes. So that 
But it, but it's that the job of INEC. INEC has. Let's, of, let's, I, I'm sorry. INEC has already, you know, deregistered so many political parties, and still we have many other political parties. I do not necessarily know if that is INEC's job to expand the space. It, could it also be that the political, yes, the yes, politicians no, like the you have decided that it's just two political parties they're going INEC. to be wrestling the in between? It's expanded by the political system, by the constitution, the laws, and the court of law, up to Supreme Court, the ruling, various rulings that have been made, have expanded the political space. INEC cannot, as of today, refuse to register any group that seeks uh, uh, to, to register as a political party. But there are conditions for you to continue to be in existence. You cannot just register a political party and go and, uh, 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 to, uh, uh, and do anything you want. No, that can't be. There are conditions for how political parties should exist. Uh, so those things are embedded in our constitution. I think what we need to do going forward is that in the next assembly, every effort should be made to expunge provisions in the Electoral Act that seek to control and micromanage the political parties. If a political party decides that it's going to bring members of one family to contest election, so be it. The people will reject them. That is democracy. If you seek to impose candidates uh, because you have money or because you, have, you, you, are, you, are, you are in government, you will meet the electorate. And as the political system, the part of INEC is to ensure that we have a good voting system where people votes will actually count. If you enforce a candidate because you are a governor, because you have, a, you have money, they are going to meet people during the election. Mm. And people will reject. Many people have lost, including sitting governors. I can count to you several sitting governors that did not win senatorial elections. And I assure you there have been many more sitting governors that seek to go to the Senate, uh, that will not go to the Senate because the public will reject them. And that is how it is. If you impose a candidate, many people have been, been imposed. People are crying war in the, even in the ongoing PDP uh, primaries about certain things that have happened. We are waiting. We have one year. To the, we have uh, eight months to the election. If you are dissatisfied, you adopt another candidate in another party and work for that candidate uh, to win, to defeat the people that you think have uh, made things uh, uh, bad for you and your people. That is how it is. Mm. But we cannot, we should not write rules for parties because that does not develop democracy. That, I hear you. That, I, I that hear you. This is the power of our system. I hear you and I appreciate where you're coming from. But I mean, I, I also wanted not to ask this question, but I will ask. It's great that you're saying that this is what you expect that the next um, National Assembly will do. But then who's to say that the majority is still not going to be selfish? Because, uh, permit me to use the word selfish, because of what they are all interested in. It's a game of interest, like you said. It's a political thing. But where does the interest of the average voter come in? You talk about governors endorsing candidates, endorsing uh, you know, other people to run for Senate, et cetera, et cetera. This has been the modus operandi for a long time. Uh, and if people are benefiting from it more and more, and half the time these people emerge uh, as the flag party flag bearers and find their way into government house, whether it be federal or state, who's going to sit there and make that change if they're also benefiting from it. Yeah, uh, you, you, are, you are right when you speak about, about that, because if you look at Nigeria, especially from 1999 to date, you need to ask yourself, what are the gains that we have made? Uh, it's my considered opinion that uh, uh, the last years have been, uh, we, have, we have not done much. Africa, Nigeria has been a disappointment to Africa. Nigeria has been a disappointment to its people. Nigeria is more divided now than it has ever been. And the rules of the system, the freedom and the rights that the people have, a lot of it have been taken away by non-state actors that the state should have driven out of the country, out of our system. The rights and the uh, welfare of the people have been compromised by people who hold political offices. You can look at it, look at it properly, and see that most states, I, most states, you saw people have been in government for eight years. You cannot see 
what they have done. Some come to the television to tell lies that they have done projects, projects that don't exist. Uh, you have a situation where uh, people take other people for granted. They want power because they want to impose one group on the other. They have created ethnic animosities. They have created problems for people that Nigeria is now more divided than it was even during the Civil War. So you are right. The people come in because of their interest. Now, the solution to it is a political system. It's, the, it's a system where votes will really count. So far, we've had a problem where people write election results. You can see, for instance, the situation we had in, in the last election, 2019. Mm -hmm. Uh, for instance, where we have Boko Haram, had more people vote in it than in River State that was peaceful and Ibony State combined. So the fact that votes don't count gives room for people to want to go and uh, turn themselves into warlords, into uh, uh, virtual terrorists for the people in the state areas where they have domain. And the reason they do that and they succeed in doing that because elections actually don't have not been taking place. And people are praying and hopeful that INEC this time around will actually use the divas in all states of the Federation and in every place where elections are going to take place. Mm. It doesn't matter who wins. If the person that wins was elected by the people, it means that the people will be able to drive him out if he does not perform. But if you even look at the, uh, uh, the delegate system or of election that is, taking, that is taking place, which my, uh, my party, the PDP, has adopted, uh, who, there, there are very, very, very few, maybe 1% or less, or less votes, electoral votes of the country, where during the Congresses, people actually line up to vote for who should be their delegate. That did not take place. Some stakeholders, some governors, and uh, some warlords in some states where there are no governors sat down and wrote down the, name, the names of people that are delegates. In some places, people put the names of their children, put the names of their wives, put the names of their, their aunties, their mothers as delegates, people who cannot read or write. And so you say, okay, you are going to hold election. You are going to hold Congress. People are going to queue up, but those people... Have no do, uh, uh, have not been. If you even check the membership cards, the of those people were just manufactured just before the election. But the who, who should take that election. blame? Because you see, and every time I have reason. every time I have well, conversations with uh, every time I have conversations with INEC on on you know voter education, educating. Actually, they say that look, the job of educating the public even though INEC has a job, but then the political parties also have a job in educating its people. I'm asking, I'm talking about the issue of delegates here. We, because what we hear on a daily basis and what we see now is that, you know, the delegates issue is a money-making thing. It's, it's a group of people smiling to the bank for a one man's interest or going to the highest bidder. And as you've rightly said, people put names of people who may not necessarily be party members. But then when, when asked about party registers and who the people are within these parties, there's, there's radio silence. So again, can we really be pointing fingers if those fingers are not pointing back at us? And when I say us, I'm talking about you and every other politician who yeah. is in a political party. That's Why are parties not engaging the point. You know, their that members? Is the point I'm making. That is the point I'm making, that we in the political system have been a disappointment and a failure to the country. And if you rise up, if people rise up against us, they will be completely justified because we don't play according to the rules. We don't have rules that are followed. And uh, we do things, for, for instance, uh, uh, let, me, let me go back to talk about the issue of political education. Why would somebody who wants to benefit from the illiteracy of the people, of the lack of capacity of the people, give political education to the people. The political parties are not interested in people who ask questions. They are not interested in people who are independent. They are not interested in people who will do what is right. That is why I said we in the National Assembly should open up the political space 
so that people that seek to contest election and I deny for whatsoever reason can contest the election as independent candidates. One. Okay. Number two, I also said, I think if I think goes ahead today and implements the beavers, the system that they used in uh, the FCT and uh, a number of states in the last election, mm -hmm. uh, it will bring out, it, it will now indicate to people that votes count and people will be able to vote. There will be no more fake votes to manufacture by uh, bribing any, any official, any police or security agencies to go and write results, tear results sheets or print new results sheets as okay. we've had avalanche of complaints over the years. Mm. And then the, the, the final point I want to Finally. make is that the people themselves, political education is not just for political parties. I, I, the political education is for civil society groups, community-based organizations, faith-based organizations. It's for the people who are suffering the brunt of failure of leadership, of corruption that we talk about, okay. of uh, decay in the system that has made Nigeria, that we look at every indice, okay. every indice, uh, if you check every indicator in the country today, you will discover that Nigeria is either on the top of the worst or at the bottom of the best. Well, I want if you to... look at Nigerians, they go out of Nigeria, they perform excellently well. Why do they perform excellently well outside Nigeria? Because we have a system that does not allow things to move the way it should move. And well, people are operating that system, they are benefiting from it. The mistake that they are making is that we are sleepwalking into disaster that will consume everybody and, every, uh, and everything. And the reason why today we have large swaths of Nigerian territory under the control of non-state actors. Well, Honorable Rima Sha Shawulu is a member of the House of Representatives for Tunkum Dunga Usa Federal Constituency in Taraba State. We appreciate your thoughts. Thank you very much for speaking with us. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break. And when we come back, how prepared is INEC for the upcoming Ekiti State election? We'll be talking with the resident electoral commissioner after the break.